Good evening. And welcome to God's house here at St. Peter's as we celebrate the festival of the baptism of our Lord. This is kind of a transitional commemoration. We're moving from Christmas into the epiphany season, the season of light. And nothing could be more appropriate than remembering the time when Jesus went to the River Jordan and was baptized at his insistence by John the Baptist. And we'll talk about that in our sermon and hear that in our hymns. But we'll begin with the opening hymn that remembers the visit of the Magi, the wise men who went to Bethlehem to worship their savior king. Hymn 372, as with gladness, men of old, I invite you to turn to page 215, Evening Prayer, the service of Vespers, page 215, please stand. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Be our light and scatter the darkness, and hear our evening prayer and praise. 
Gladdening light of purest glory, shining down from heaven on high, from the ever-living Father, hail most blessed Jesus Christ. In the fading light of evening, as the setting sun departs, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we adore you, Lord our God. For your gift of life unending, joyful voices ever sing, hymns of praise that rightly honor, Son of God, your saving name. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. We, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let the incense of our prayers rise before you, O Lord, and let your mercy descend on us that we may sing your praises with the church on earth and forever in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord promises to put his spirit on the Messiah, empowering the anointed one to free us from our sins. We see this promise fulfilled when Jesus is baptized. The prophecy of Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I am placing my spirit on him. He will announce a just verdict for the nations. He will not cry out. He will not raise his voice. He will not make his voice heard in the street. A bent reed he will not break. And a dimly burning wick he will not snuff out. He will faithfully bring forth a just verdict. He will not burn out, and he will not be broken until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his law. This is what the true God says, the Lord who creates the heavens and stretches them out, who spreads out the earth and everything that it produces, who gives breath to the people on it and life to those who walk on it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will Hold on to your hand, and I will guard you. I will appoint you to be a covenant for the people, to be a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring the prisoners out from the dungeon, and to bring those who sit in darkness out of prison. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing Psalm 45. My heart is stirred by a noble theme. The organist will play the refrain and the psalm tone, and then we'll begin singing together. It's printed in your bulletin.
as Peter told others how God had anointed Jesus, through that good news, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon Peter's listeners. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak. Now I really am beginning to understand that God does not show favoritism, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. He sent his word to the people of Israel, proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, because God was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 3. Then Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized by John at the Jordan. But John tried to stop him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, because it is proper for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John let him. After Jesus was baptized, he immediately went up out of the water. Suddenly, the heavens were open for him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and landing on him. And a voice out of the heavens said, This is my Son, whom I love. I am well pleased with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We sing the hymn of the day, To Jordan's River Came Our Lord, hymn 377.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During the time of the Old Testament, and that would be from the time when Moses walked down from Mount Sinai, until the moment Jesus declared with power and authority that it is finished on the cross, the cross of Calvary, from that time until then, the Old Testament when God's people were under God's prescribed laws for how to worship and how to live, he set down for them three major festivals. The Passover was one of them that commemorated the Passover of the angel of death over God's people. The angel would pass over any home with the blood of the lamb on the door. There was the Pentecost festival, which during the Old Testament was a harvest festival. So think more Thanksgiving than anything else, a harvest Thanksgiving festival. But there was also a day that doesn't really match up with anything that we do today, and that's okay. The Old Testament's the Old Testament. We have the New Testament. Adam had it, and so do we. But the Old Testament had the Day of Atonement. It was a long and strange day when all the people were to gather together and the priests and especially the high priest would have a lot of special rituals to perform. I won't go into all of them, but the one that you should note that really does point exactly squarely at Jesus Christ and his baptism in the River Jordan is the scapegoat ceremony. I'll read it to you. These were the commands from God through Moses to the people this is Leviticus chapter 16. This is verse 20. When Aaron, the high priest, had finished making atonement for the most holy place, sometimes that's called the Holy of Holies, that special, special room in the temple, at that time the tabernacle, that tent of meeting. When he had made atonement for the most holy place, the tabernacle and the altar, Aaron shall bring forth a live goat, he is to lay both hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the wickedness and rebellion of the Israelites, all their sins, and put them on the goat's head. He shall send the goat away into the desert in the care of a man appointed for the task. The goat will carry on itself all their sins to a solitary place, and the man shall release it into the desert. It's a strange ceremony. It was all symbolic, pointing ahead to the one who would actually carry away not just the sins of the Israelites, but of all people. And so we see in what takes place in the River Jordan our scapegoat. Jesus is many things, prophet, priest, king. He's the Passover lamb who takes away the sin of the world. But we also see, as God wishes us to see, the one who bears all our sin, even becomes our sin, is declared guilty in our place and then is driven out into the desert, into the wilderness, far away from anyone and anything, and most importantly, from the Father himself. Jesus is our scapegoat. Now, you've heard that term. It means the person who gets blamed for when things go wrong. And that's typically something that happens in an organization or in politics. You need a scapegoat, a sacrificial lamb. Boy, we use a lot of words in the Bible for our own uses, don't we? But here, that's pretty close to being right. Jesus gets blamed and that's the idea, right? Someone who really was just innocent takes the fall. He's the fall guy. Jesus is the fall guy, the scapegoat. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, God made him, Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Last week I mentioned how the people who welcomed Jesus were those who were not his own. <coughs> not by blood anyway, or by expectation of the world. And yet, you are his own.
And that takes place through this blessed exchange. We see that exchange on the cross when Jesus declares that all sin is paid once for all. But you can also see it clearly here. And again, it's most appropriate that as we kind of leave the days of Christmas behind us, <clears throat> never forgetting the incarnation of our God who lives with us, tabernacles with us, dwells with us, abides with us. We also see the very reason he came to dwell with us was to take our place, to be our scapegoat, to take the fall, the fall of Adam and of the entire world on himself. The Day of Atonement saw a strange ritual when a man would take a goat, a live goat, and put his hands and then speak out loud the sins of the people. And then a man would lead that goat away, far into the wilderness. Jesus, and we'll see this in a couple of months as we begin the season of Lent, as we reflect on the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness, he is driven out by the Holy Spirit after he's baptized. Where? Out into the wilderness to do battle with the devil. For our purposes tonight, I want you to remember this baptism of Jesus that gives our baptisms their meaning and power is a reversal in a very real way of our baptisms. The scapegoat that Jesus is for us walks into that water of the river Jordan and he goes in clean. He's clean. Perfect, blameless, without a blemish. Nothing bad at all. He oozes goodness. He is the embodiment of all that is good. He is the maker of heaven and earth. By his holy word, all things were made by his desire and will. And yet he, the one who oozes goodness out of every pore of his body, comes out of that water filthy. Because the reversal is that we go into our baptisms filthy. And yet, how do we come out? Smelling like roses, oozing goodness in the sight of God. That's what God sees now. When he looks at you right now, even though you may have been baptized three decades ago, or last week, or 77 years ago, whenever, you are baptized and you ooze goodness in the sight of God. And that judgment is the only one that matters. He declares Jesus guilty, even though he is innocent. All our sin has been dumped on him. He's filthy with our filth. And that's why we walk away from baptism and live in our baptisms every single day of our lives until the day Jesus will call us home oozing the goodness of Christ. It says that the Father is well pleased with his Son. Even though it will seem as though God will abandon his Son, which is, in a sense, actually very true. Jesus in the wilderness is alone. Jesus on the cross is alone. He hangs alone. And he does this for a father who is well pleased with him. Why is a father who is essentially, and by the way that word in the Greek is this idea of someone who is well thought of. The father thinks very highly of Jesus. In fact, you could even just simply say that Jesus, well the father is proud of Jesus. And why shouldn't he? This is his trustworthy, loyal, faithful son. His only faithful son. Who willingly takes on the role of scapegoat happily, cheerfully, boldly, with resolution. And so because of this blessed exchange, and when people want to talk about Christianity, and they want to 
talk about this or that, all these other topics that come up, and those can be discussed at a certain point, sure. But if they don't understand this blessed exchange, then we're really talking past each other. If they don't understand what has occurred in the River Jordan, that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, and we see that clearly in his baptism, then we're just going to be maybe using the same English language, but we won't be communicating much at all. So take him to the River Jordan. Take him to Mount Calvary. This is real. What Aaron did and all the other high priests, and by the way, there were many times during those 15 centuries from Sinai to Calvary, from the time when Moses came down from Mount Sinai to when Jesus hangs on the cross and declares it is finished, 1,500 years, there were a lot of times when the priests did not do their jobs and the people abandoned their one true love, the living God. So there were some years, some decades, where there was no Day of Atonement at all. But when it did occur, that strange ceremony, and often pretty uncomfortable to hear the priest, the preacher, declare all the evil of you and all your fellow children of Abraham. That was symbolic. But again, remember who it points to. That's why it says I-N-R-I on our crucifixes. And well, it should. Pontius Pilate put Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Latin doesn't have the letter J, so we have to do I. He put it up there. We're not exactly sure why, either in an ironic way or sarcastically or maybe with sincerity. But it's right. He is Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, true man, true God, who came to take our place to complete and fulfill all righteousness, the blessed exchange. Simply so that this is true, the Father is proud of you. In Jesus' name, amen. The saying is trustworthy and worthy of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. 1 Timothy chapter 1. I invite you to turn to page 220, the Song of Mary, and please do stand. Please be seated as the offering is gathered and presented at the altar.
page 221. In our special intercessions, we pray for Bob Fink and Richard Woolman, who have been hospitalized this past week at St. Agnes. And we also pray for our sister in Christ, Clara Wawarat, who is in hospice care near death. Please stand, page 221. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of our synod and district, for all pastors in Christ, for all who are servants of the church, and for all the people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who govern our nation and for all public servants, that they may be upheld and strengthened for every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy for Bob, Richard, and Clara, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please be seated for our final hymn, 928. very warm welcome to all of you here this evening. It's such a pleasure to have you in God's house as we gather around his holy gospel. Poinsettias, anyone who would like a poinsettia, please pick them up after the service. So even if you didn't buy one of them, that's fine. Please take it home and enjoy. And there will be bags in the back room and please do leave the saucers uh, as you depart. LGP, Lutheran Girl Pioneers, is coming up on Tuesday. So moms and daughters, uh, take note of that. Boys Club is Friday next week. So a week from tomorrow, and that's a Nerf battle in the gym. Um, please do note in your weekly announcements in your mailboxes the East Central Tournament uh, help that we're asking you for. Uh, it's going to be a big event uh, here in the Fond du Lac area, and we are running the show this year, so we're excited to do that. But if you could help out in any way possible, that would be most appreciated. And also, ladies, there's a great way to start the new year, 2023. Please plan to attend the Evening Circle Soup and Sandwich Meeting this coming Monday night at 6 p.m. So this is the 9th of January. It's in the multi-purpose room. Please join uh, them for a light meal followed by our meeting. Hope to see you there. And voters meeting is the annual voters meeting is coming up on the 15th of January after the late service. So that's a Sunday morning. And uh, there'll be the budget on the agenda, but also calls. Uh, and I'll just mention on uh, the church end, we will be calling for an administrative pastor uh, that's the tentative plan, and it looks like that's going to happen on the 15th. So voters, please put that on your calendars to attend. And now over to Mr. Raditz for a school update. Thanks, Pastor. I'll only take up about yeah, another hour of your time. Good evening, everybody. Here's your update for January. Our enrollment right now is at 187. If you maybe think back to when I did this last in September, sorry about the amount of time in between the two, but we have gained one student. Actually, that student will start next week in the second grade classroom. Her name is Estelle. So please welcome Estelle when you see her around. They were in church. Uh, they, the, the family actually moved from the state of Washington all the way out here, found a really cool house on Park Ave and uh, they are working at the Agnesian Hospital in town here. So welcome that family when you see them around. All right. Events coming up. We have a full school spelling bee on January 13th at 1.30 p.m. You guys are welcome to join us for that and sit in and listen to our awesome spellers. They'll be, the winners of that competition will be able to participate in a citywide comp competition along with the spelling bee at WLA. As Pastor Boringer said, the East Central Tournament is coming up very soon on January 20th through the 22nd. We will need your help. The Wall B Team Tournament for basketball is coming up in February, as well as the A Team Tournament the following weekend. And then put on your calendars the third and fourth grade play coming up on March 3rd. They are doing fee, fi, fo, fum. I'm thinking it has to do with a giant. 
WLA events coming up. Uh, Forward in Faith, this is a WLA campaign celebration event on January 29th, that's Sunday, uh, from 12.30 to 2 o'clock. And I want to get to know our eighth graders. We have 15 eighth graders this year. We'll do the first five today. This is Chloe Baining. Ask them a few questions. Why did your parents send you to SPLS in their opinion? And Chloe said, so I can learn more about Jesus and because they felt I would be safer here at St. Peter's. What is your favorite book? She says, a series of unfortunate events. You'll notice that every student for the favorite book thing picked a series. I think kids like books and series now. If you could choose your career path today, what would it be? And Chloe says, I'd like to be a pharmacist. Our next eighth grader is Jackson Gill. Same questions to him. Why did his parents send him to St. Peter's? So that I could grow up in a friendly environment and have classes based on the Word of God. What is your favorite book? Jackson said, the I Survived series. And if you could choose your career path today, what would it be? He said he'd join the military and be in the Army. I asked him why he wanted to do that. He said he has an uncle that serves in the military and the Army, and he liked to do the same thing. This here is Lindley Jarabic. Why did she, why did her parents send her to, to St. Peter's? She said to learn about God, and my dad went here. There's two of them that are like that, a couple of dads. Way to go, dads. What is your favorite book, Lindley? She said The Hunger Games and Harry Potter. She could not decide between the two. If you could choose your career path today, what would it be? She says a veterinarian. She said domesticated animals, not the big farm animals. So sorry, Mr. Zick, if you're here today, but she's not going to be able to help you out. This is Taylor LaRange. Her parents sent her here because it's a Christian school, and my dad went here. What is your favorite book, Taylor? The Maze Runner series. See, all series. They love the series. If you could choose your career path today, what would it be? Something with sports. Playing sports, just something with sports. It took her a while to get that out of her, but she does enjoy her sports. And our last eighth grader for today is Jermaine Lofton. Why did his parents send him here? I'll be able to grow in Jesus, in Jesus' word. His favorite book, another series, Wings of Fire series. If you could choose your career path today, what would it be? And he says, a chef. He likes to cook with his mom. Just some pictures from the past few months. The upper graders went to see the seminary. And during the Christmas time, uh, we decorated some of our classrooms, our tables in the sixth grade room. It's a really nice smile you have there, Griffin. Can't wait for him to see that one. Uh, the third grade room, uh, they took over Mrs. Hines' desk, and Mrs. Hines just joined the third grade classroom. So, Oop. We had our last rehearsal for our Christmas service, and then we did that uh, right before we went on break. And we got some good snow that came. That one day it snowed, and it was good packing snow the whole day, so the kids were making giant boulders all day long that day. So we're having fun in the snow. Uh, this is a picture of Aiden Casper. He won the piano award for most minutes practiced. He almost hit 2,000 minutes in one month. Pretty awesome. Then we had our splash event in December, right before we went on break. The teams had different challenges to do in a bunch of different areas of the school. These are some of those pictures. I don't know how Kalen did that. There's like seven of them on there. And we had ugly sweater day. So Alex was kind enough to get his picture taken with me. I actually forgot to wear my ugly sweater that day. And then our first graders, uh, it was pajama day for them. And uh, we had to teach them how to smile that day. Bradley, you got it figured out now, though? Yeah, that's good. And then a divine call update on the school end. Again, we have a call meeting on January 15th at 11.30. We do have some faculty changes that I want to make you aware about. Uh, with Mr. Hines and Mrs. Hines both accepting calls for Redwood Falls, Minnesota, we had grades 3 and 5 open. We did some shifting around with some of our teachers to put them in, in the area that they, 
they can serve best in. So here are some of those changes. Mrs. Zabel next year will be teaching in grade three. Mrs. Roberta Recker will be switching over to the eighth grade classroom and she will also serve as our athletic director. Mr. Carl Mansky will be moving into the technology director role and then will be serving in either the fifth grade or sixth grade room. He is yet to decide that. Which means we have grade two open and grade four open. That grade four position will also be an assistant to the athletic director, mostly running the concession stand. Our preschool is open for enrollment for St. Peter's members only, and that begins on January 9th. The open enrollment for Good Shepherd then will take place on January 30th and then run through that date. We will host a preschool open house on February 5th from 11.30 uh, to 1.30. So if you know you want to apply to our preschool, you can do it right away. Just stop in the school office, grab an application, and fill one out. We'll get it on file for you. And then last, uh, the community then will fill any um, spots that are still available on February 13th and beyond. And one more time, your help is needed for this tournament that's coming up in January. Check your email from Anna and Ashley next week. They'll send out some sign-up geniuses. If you're able to help us out in the concession stand or run an admissions table or scorebook or clock, if you like to watch basketball, those other two would probably be the ones for you. But please help us out. Uh, we are running this tournament, and it is kind of a big deal. So thank you very much. Have a great rest of your evening.